We are ready to start, and our first step is to discuss the general notion of image piles. What is it? How is it obtained? How is it used? These questions will serve as the backbone for our coming discussion. We start with the virtual experiment, in which we accumulate many image patches taken from various images. Let's assume that this set includes millions of patches of size 20 by 20 pixels each. Every such patch is a point in the 400-dimensional Euclidean space, and so all these millions of patches create a cloud of such points in this space. Now let's imagine that we walk into R400 and look at this cloud. What are we expected to see? If we could look at this cloud, the first thing that would have drawn our attention is the vast emptiness. This R400 space is expected to be mostly empty. So where are all these millions of points? They would be concentrated on extremely low dimensional structures, such as manifolds and filaments. In fact, we could expect the density of these points to vary substantially from one place to another, some regions being heavily populated, while others are almost empty. What is the meaning of this cloud we are looking at? This is a sampling from the distribution of image patches. What we have really done here is to empirically build this probability density function. Let's call it P of X. So let's talk about this probability density function. First, nothing is special here about image patches. And in fact, we could have repeated this experiment with practically any data source and still the general conclusions would have been the same. Nevertheless, we will stick to images as our main emphasis in this course is image processing applications. So we have just made our first effort to characterize the probability density function of small 20 by 20 pixels images P of X. Think about it. This is a function that tells you for each such image how likely it is to exist. What could we do with such a function? The surprising answer is everything. Really? Everything? Let's try to remove noise from such an image using this function. We start by defining our goal. X0 is an ideal image and Y is a contaminated version of it where the additive noise V has bounded energy epsilon. Note that from here on, we will conveniently consider only images of size 20 by 20 pixels, but of course, everything we say applies to any size images. Our goal is to start from the measurement Y and recover an image as close as possible to X0. Here is a graphic illustration of the problem. The red zone defines the region in which P of X is high. X0 is a point in this area, and Y is up to epsilon away from it. Given the function P of X, we have two options in recovering x0. The more intuitive approach is to seek the point x with a maximal probability such that it is epsilon close to the given image y. This is in fact the maximum a posterior probability estimation, the map in short. A better alternative is to find the expected x in this epsilon sphere, an estimator that is known to give the smallest expected squared error. It is called the minimum mean squared error estimate, MMSC for short. Let's not dive deeply into these estimators at the moment, as we will discuss them in much more details later on in the course. Anyway, have you noticed what just happened? In both these estimates, we relied on P of X for the purpose of removing the noise, just as promised. In fact, the very same treatment can be given to more general inverse problems, in which Y is a degraded version of X0. In this case, y is given as a known degradation operator c multiplying x0 plus additive noise, just as before. In an attempt to recover x0 from y, let's suggest using map again, finding the image x that maximizes the probability while forcing x to be in the ellipsoid defined by the measurements equation. We could have suggested an MMSE estimation again, but we will not bother with this. The bottom line is P of X is central for the recovery process, just as before. Great, what about compression? Is there any role for P of X in compressing images? Again, let's start by defining the problem. We have a budget of B bits to compress images X emerging from the distribution P of X. And our goal is to do this while getting the smallest possible compression error. The best strategy for handling this problem is clustering or vector quantization in which the signal space is divided into two to the power b non-overlapping and fully covering regions, as shown in this figure. In fact, 
this division emerges naturally as the minimizer of this expression in which there are two to the power b centers of these clusters xk and our goal is to find these representations so as to reduce the expected error. By the way, you will observe that we chose to disregard the issue of entropy coding which complicates things in this case. So yes, p of x is relevant for compression too. What about sampling? When a signal is to be sampled, the general view of this operation is of a series of inner products of the incoming signal with some chosen basis functions. Given these inner product scalars, a reconstruction algorithm aims to recover the original signals and our goal is to optimize the parameters of the sampler and the reconstruction algorithms so as to minimize the error this process induces. Such an optimization may follow this error expression in which again, p of x plays a central role. All that this expression says is the expected sampling and reconstruction error over the distribution of x should be minimized. What about image separation? Suppose that we are given a noisy image y that is built of two different images x1 and x2 where each emerges from a different distribution. How could we recover x1 and x2 from y? The answer is simple. Find such two images that maximize their probabilities while giving a sum that is up to epsilon away from y. In image processing, we use this idea to decompose images into cartoon and texture parts. Such a separation has various needs, as we will see later on. And again, the PDF of the images was critical here for the separation to succeed. So we have seen that P of X plays an important role in denoising and more broadly in all the inverse problems in compression, sampling and separation. What else? In fact, P of X has many other uses, such as a detection of anomalies in images, in recognition where we aim to assign a label to a given image, in synthesis of images where we are to draw at random an image from its probability density function and more. The bottom line is this. We were wondering what P of X could be good for and the answer is practically everything we do on signals. The next natural question to ask is therefore how shall we get P of X? More specifically, how shall we get the probability density function P of X for images? This is the topic we discussed next.